Thank you for inviting me. Very happy to join you all. Yesterday, I managed to be online with, with some of you, not all the time, but I'm very happy to be here today. So um, um, just let me know when we can start. Can we start? You're yes, off. go ahead. Okay, so good morning, everyone. And um, it's wonderful to be here with all of you um, and to share some thoughts. And um, unlike some of the presentation I've seen, which have been very informative and very um, sort of explaining the, the more professional sides of things, I'm actually going to take it to a more personal side. Um, and um, hence the title. Uh, it's personal, but it's also, I think, a reflective of what I think we need to look out for um, in terms of empowering women in the field and in terms of um, where we want to get to and also the obstacles and difficulties which we face which have been uh, mentioned yesterday and um, of, obviously it's there is a strong focus nowadays nowadays about this so that's the title a garden of hope um, and what I want to talk to you about this morning and if I can get the slides going forward, which I can't seem to get them going. There we go. Um, I wanted to begin with the concept of what it means to be a role model. Um, and this concept um, emerged from the work of sociologist uh, Robert Merton, in which he found that um, within groups, um, social groups, there are people who this social group aspires to. And they can be um, they can be individuals within the society, or they can be um, celebrities, or or a mixture. Um, and the idea is that uh, these role models then are people you look up to, so that um, you see what they're doing, and it reflects where you want to go. So it's aspirational, and so. I think the, the idea of a role model is fundamental uh, for everyone. Um, it was certainly clear to me when I began in the profession, there were people I looked up to. Um, having said that, uh, a, the concept of a role model is not necessarily a concept based on age or seniority. Um, it's a concept on someone who does something and you aspire to. So at times it can be someone you look up to and they are actually older. But at times it can be someone you look up to, but they're actually younger. And I think this is really, really uh, important for us in our field. So I'm going to go through a couple of people who've been my role models and who are my role models today and talk about the impact they've had also in the field of VLT within Brazil. OK, um, it is very important for us here in Brazil to understand that our field is full of strong and powerful and important women who have changed the, the, the focus of VLT over the years. And I think we often forget this. And it, it, this identity is really important. Some of them um, are Brazilian and some aren't, but they have dedicated their lives to ELT within Brazil. And this is really, really important. So. Um, Again, I can't seem, sorry about this, can't seem to get the slides going on. Um, thank you very much. So the first two ladies I'd like to introduce you to are Sarah Walker and Carmen Lucas. Um, unfortunately, Carmen Lucas is no longer with us. Um, she passed away uh, three years ago. Um, so Carmen Lucas, she was the superintendent at Cultura Inglesa, which is where I still work today. Um, and she's very important because she set up within our field several of the institutions and the things we we, we believe in and follow. Um, she created the first link between Brazil and Ayatefl. And in fact, in 1993, we had the first Brazilian Ayatefl event. Um, which I participated in. I think it was the first and only one. Um, but it created the link between Brazil and Ayatefl, um, which was wonderful. Um, and she was a visionary woman. She, she managed to uh, recognize within our uh, MECI, which is our, uh, cult, uh, our education ministry, the Cambridge uh, uh, Teaching, the Cambridge Teaching Awards and the Cambridge um, Language Certificates. Um, as part of the language 
course in Brazil, um, and, and due to her that we we have these certificates recognized. And Sarah Walker, she's the founder, one of the founders of Brass Tissel, uh, and she's still going strong. She's on the advisory um, board as well, and her her support has been was fundamental to me when I was. Um, Brad Tissot president. It is very important to talk to someone who has a, an outside perspective and can support you with everything you do. So um, she is fundamental um, in, um, she's also an MBE. I can see Adriana, I didn't know that Adriana, Adriana Lima has just typed out in here. So um, two uh, very strong women who shaped the face of the LT in Brazil and I hope we always remember the contribution they gave to our field. Um, moving on to the next slide, um, this is a person, um, two people who were very important to me. Again, Yudiko is no longer with us, she passed away. Um, but for me, these two ladies were fundamental. Um, Aparecida Neves was my first DOS. And, uh, I was a young girl beginning in the profession, and um, I was very, very engaged in everything, but I was also a very temperamental soul. I have been and continue being so. And it was really important for Aparicida to sort of control me at times and say, no, this is not how you do things. This is not how um, <laughs> you, know, you should do things. And um, this is really important. A DOS who guides you professionally, who supports you as well when you need that type of support. And I couldn't have done it without her. Uh, and until today, we sometimes meet up uh, but also the memory of of knowing I always counted on her uh, to help me develop um, it was due to her that I got onto the Delta I tried to do the Delta twice and I didn't get in you know and I sort of saying well if I don't get in this time I won't do it again and she said no way you're going to continue trying until you get on there on the course so persistence uh, uh, and resilience was something she taught and the call was largely responsible for my work as well within the academic field she was a great, huge encourager of research and, and teachers doing research. Uh, she always presented at conferences and she was a, um, a, a PhD herself. Um, and she had this lyrical side to her, which was beautiful. She had this engagement and this enthusiasm. She was the first teacher I met when I joined Cultura. Uh, and she was such a strong woman and full of ideas. And I wouldn't have got where I did without her because she always allowed me to dream big. And I think this is why she was so important. And she, in the, our city of Niterói, she's fondly rem remembered. And we all owe a lot to her as teachers. Um, the next person um, I wanted to share, uh, whose influence I wanted to share with you is Patricia Blower, who not only was an, a coordinator for me, but she also uh, became uh, the academic director of Cultura Inglesa. Um, and Patricia is all strong sense of understanding and knowledge of the field of VLT, uh, strong woman in terms of uh, knowing the ethics of the profession, and I think this is really important. Um, it's not just the pedagogical side, it's not just the um, creative side, there is an ethical side to our profession as well, which we need to, to keep up, and, and she taught me a lot along those lines. Um, and Patricia is a poet, and so um, her contribution uh, has always been beyond just the classroom. It's a creative and inspirational um, contribution. Uh, there's a whole generation of teachers in Brazil who are still impacted by all her contributions. She's no longer acting within the field of ALT, but everyone remembers her um, because every word she said had a deep and strong impact on all of us. And um, we work with the spoken word. And I think we sometimes under, underestimate the power of the spoken word. And she, um, she was able to show us how important it is for us to choose our words carefully, use them, and obviously um, do the best as professionals. Um, and on to the next lady. I'm not quite sure how I'm doing for time. Janaina. Janaina is fundamental in terms of research nowadays. Um, she is strong, um, strong uh, contributor to associations in Brazil. She was a uh, contributor to Brasil, and she 
is um, one of the members of Appliège, which is the state um, uh, association for teachers of state schools in, in of, of the state in, in Rio de Janeiro. And, and Janaina, um, I met her at work and then we became colleagues during my master's at, at UFI. And, and Janaina has always been a strong presence for me. Um, she helped me take my research to another level. And what I admire about her is that she has always brought together the, um, the pedagogical, but with the political. And this is so important in our field. And it's not always we come across this. And I think sometimes we're afraid of this. But um, education and, and teaching and the teaching of English is based on policies, um, educational policies. And we can't sort of separate one for, from the other. And Janaina is still very active publishing papers on the role of associations and the pedagogical and political side of what we teach and how we teach it and where our influences come from. And she gives a, a, a Brazilian twist to everything we do, which is fundamental. We cannot isolate the work we do in LT with, from without our uh, social economic context. And Janaina still is active in, in this area. And that's why I admire her so much. Um, the next lady, she is online with us, Adriana Lima. Um, Adriana, um, inspires me in so many ways. She is also um, a member of, of Brass Tiso, um in the advice um, alongside with me. And um, it's not only on a personal level because she teaches us everything which is more human and um, important in our field. Um, what the quote she chose is absolutely her. It's all about empathy and looking at each other and listening to each other and not underestimating people. And this is really fundamental in our field. Um, we can never, we're, we're always there to support everyone, but we never must, we can never underestimate what people are capable of and give them the space to develop. And Adriana helps us very much with that. Um, she's also a fantastic organizer. And so for every event we hold at Breast Tea Soul, we cannot do without her support because she puts us on the right path of helping us to see how we need to organize things, what we need to do. And that's what makes the event, you know, one of the key elements of making our event successful. So, um, Adriana, thank you very much because I know you're online. Um, the next lady um, is Giselle Santos. Giselle, um, has, Giselle, has taught me a lot about something I didn't know a lot about. Uh, and she has made my enthusiasm for education and technology sort of go way beyond what I thought, where I thought I could go. Um, and she's shown me um, how we can transition without fear um, into this field of education, which perhaps we need to, it's another way of looking at ELT. Uh, which perhaps we need to begin to focus on, um, going just beyond just the teaching of a language itself, involving our students in other ways of looking at education, and she's been instrumental in this. And also, there is an element of creativity in her, which I find admirable. Um, um, how can someone come up with so many wonderful and brilliant ideas? And Giselle, you will see her involved in many uh, events, uh, social media as well. She's always willing to share everything she learns. And this is important because um, where would we be without um, this element of sharing? We become strong as a group of teachers when we share uh, and when we collaborate together. And, and this is fundamental um, as well. So on to our penultimate slide here. And another lady I had to bring into this is my mum. Okay. Um, and I want to talk about the power of mums. Um, mums inspire us in so many ways, um, because obviously there are mums, um, but I think they have another role as well. So what we see them do, and I think this goes for any role model, is, um, is how we learn. And a mum who pushes us forward is fundamental. A mum who believes in what we do. Um, I can't say my mum um, followed a sort of, she didn't follow the same path I, I chose. Um, she um, 
she decided at one point in her life to become a full-time mom and not work, which is a decision I never took. Um, and she was happy with that decision until her children left home. Um, and then she went back into university and she completed her graduation because she never completed her first degree in veterinary science. And she completed her master's and she became a psychotherapist. And she's now, well, I can't say her age because she doesn't really like that. But she finally stopped working last year. Um, but it's been a fulfilling life and it's been in the reverse. And this is why I chose her as an inspiration because I'd never think there is any age. We always say, ah, oh, it's too late to start something. No, it isn't. It never is too late. Um, we have to understand that we always have options and we can always search for new knowledge and understanding of, of things and we can always restart our career. That is really, really important. So um, this is what my mom has shown, you know, never give up, continue um, and go on. And this is where we're going to, um, it's important. And also I think it's important because society has changed a lot. So, um, I mean, I'm in my mid fifties and I know I have a hell of a lot to contribute still uh, within society and within the field. It's no longer a case that we retire and we stop. And I think she shows exactly that. Okay. So that is it. Can I just show the last slide? What are the seeds of change? The seeds of change is that we have to plant them. We, this is an installation that was happening at the Tate Modern where they plant, they just got earth and saw what happened and plants emerged. But I think it has to be more conscientious on our part. We actually literally have to decide what seeds we're going to plant, where we're going to plant them and hope that our gardens for the future women in society and the future teachers, that they grow and uh, grow to fruition and the full extent that they hope to to be as professionals and as women. Thank you very much.